I don't want to teach it to you because at the end of the day, we have a problem in our world. I notice a challenge, which is a lot of us have tendencies towards unconscious consumption. Unconscious consumption could be unconscious or not very conscious or thoughtful, intentional spending. Spending of resources, time, energy, money. Uh, it could be around eating. It could be around what we put into our mind, what we view, what we read, right? So we have these challenges in, this wor in our world around unconscious consumption. And, and my story, if you all know it, is of transforming my beliefs around what's possible for me professionally, romantically, physically, health-wise, losing over 160 pounds and transforming through a divorce. And so much of that had to do with me becoming a person who was going from being a consumer to really living into being a creator and moving from unconscious consumption to very conscious consumption. So if you're watching any of my videos, you're learning, looking at my, new, my recent content, there's a lot about being a consumer or a creator. I believe that our work in this world is to shift to being a creator, to be someone who is taking full responsibility, taking ownership, who is accepting challenges and obstacles as ways to grow, who is taking on new skills and building things inside themselves that help them be more loving, more honest, more powerful, um, more grounded, more capable. They want to create for others. They want to be of service. They want to bring value into the world rather than just taking and consuming. They can manage their own mindset and they choose their own beliefs and values and language rather than just taking the beliefs and values and language and mindset that the world and our culture and our families and our school systems and our communities and our organizations have put upon us, have given us. So I'm big on this shift from consumer to creator. It's like my core thing. It's what I'm working on making my, the deepest um, distinction in my work with people. But I, I want to also help people understand that consumption's not really the problem. It's how we consume. It's how we consume. Consumption can be great. I mean, I ate some freaking chocolate, some Vosges chocolate yesterday that is like a 63% dark chocolate, all fair trade, which has dark cherries and, and manchago cheese in it. And it was like mind-blowing, taste bud altering, life-changing. That's some dope conscious consumption. Now I could just smash the whole bar or I could eat it mindfully, slowly. In fact, the bar lasted me from Friday till last night. Um, don't mean to brag. Uh, but anyway, so... So point is, consumption can be great. I transformed by consuming TED Talks, books, online programs, um, by taking in new concepts, new beliefs, new values, new, new ways or processes of working with my own inner dialogue and my own inner world. We have to consume. But the challenge is when we are in the consumer role. And so I want to identify four modes or um, ways that we consume. And there's, there's some polarization here, there's some polarity. So consuming again is not bad. We must actually consume to create. So sometimes we are consuming to create, which is beautiful, right? Like I'm working on a, uh, a pitch or proposal for a workshop and a follow-up coaching program for an organization that has asked for my support and around this whole concept, this consumer to creator shift. And so there's a fundamental book that I learned a lot of the mindset flip from, the flip from drama triangle to the empowerment dynamic is a book called The Power of Ted. So I'm reading it again and I'm probably today gonna sign up for their uh, coaching training around this just to dig back into it and to enrich myself with information and knowledge and skills and tools. So that would be consumption to create. I sometimes watch documentaries, documentaries about culture, documentaries about health, documentaries about artists, because that stuff inspires me and I become more creative and I have more knowledge and I have more insight, more wisdom. I'm in an online, or not an online, like a, a group program right now that's coaching me to be better at content creation and the person who created has a ton of content to help us learn to be better. So we consume to create. We can sit down to a beautiful meal 
with someone that we've had some tension around because we want to say to them, hey, we've been, you know, we've been having this tension for a while. I want to bury the hatchet. I want to create a better relationship. That's part of consumption to create, right? So there's consumption to create. And then there's the opposite. There's consumption to procrastinate. Right? Am I on Facebook because I want to put out information in the world that I want to find new and interesting experiences? I want to be in community with others through Facebook groups? Or am I just passing time because I don't want to do the next work assignment? Or I don't want to talk to my partner today because I'm frustrated with them and I'm going to sit there on my phone and I'm going to scroll. That's one way of looking at it, right? Consumption to procrastinate. Am I watching TV right now because I don't want to go to sleep because I'm not looking forward to the day ahead? Right. Am I going to stop and get this snack because I actually uh, don't want to experience something or because I am trying to make a statement unconsciously by being late to something? Right? Am I consuming to create or am I consuming to procrastinate? Here's the deal. When you're consuming to create, it is conscious. When you're consuming to procrastinate, it's probably unconscious. You're probably not saying to yourself, I'm going to procrastinate, so I'm going to put on TV. Maybe you are. Maybe you're that authentic and real and dopely honest with yourself. And that's cool because that's a sense of liberation too. But chances are it's unconscious. So we bring it to, to light. We ask ourselves, am I consuming to create or am I consuming to procrastinate? The next distinction is we can consume to luxuriate. We, we should consume things that are luxurious, like that piece of chocolate. We should take time out of our, a busy day at the end of the day that we've worked hard and we've been using our brain and our emotions and our willpower, maybe to relax and watch a sitcom for 30 minutes. Am I enjoying a beautiful meal that's mindful, I'm mindful and I'm, I'm filled with gratitude and I'm enjoying it and I'm savoring every bite and I'm really reveling in the experience and there's great health with that experience so that I can luxuriate and I can reward myself and I can relax or I can let some steam off. Am I going on vacation to enrich my spirit and to relax my soul so I can come back with more capacity to, to create and to be powerful and to be loving and to be honest in this world? Or am I checking the box of things that I'm supposed to do to have a good vacation? Am I going on vacation to really enjoy it? Or am I going on vacation to take pictures and put it on Facebook to show people where I'm at? So we can consume to luxuriate, which is beautiful and enriching, or we can consume to disassociate. Consuming to disassociate would mean, um, I, not only am I procrastinating, but I don't want to feel something right now. A lot of the time, for example, with men and porn, it's a consumption to disassociate. They don't want to feel the sense of loneliness and powerlessness that they might be feeling in life. So they use pornography and they disassociate from the things that they don't want in their life and their world. And then they do feel something, right? They're creating a feeling state. Consuming to disassociate might also be like, okay, I don't want to actually go experience that challenging thing that I said I'm going to do. So I'm actually going to not feel the shame that I feel because I'm procrastinating. So consuming to create and consuming to luxuriate, they work together. They can have overlap. They're both positive. They're both conscious. Consuming to procrastinate, consuming to disassociate is where we become unconscious, where we hurt ourselves, where we harm our relationships, where we keep ourselves from creating the life that we love because we waste time, energy, and money and focus on things that don't serve us. They don't nourish us, they don't teach us, they don't help us bring more value into the world. And we all do it. I'm raising my hand right now. Recently I've been struggling with a little bit of consumption to disassociate and procrastinate. And it's having an impact on my life. 
I am in the place of working so hard for years on my development to know that sometimes I'll just have pockets like that. But the more conscious I become and the quicker I become conscious to the times where I'm consuming to procrastinate and I'm consuming to disassociate, the more quickly, more easily I can shift into consuming to create or consuming to luxuriate. And I can't tell you where the line is between them. You have to decide for yourself. Like for me, at the end of a hard night, watching one episode of a sitcom that I love from the past, that's cool. That's consuming to luxuriate. I'm taking a load off. Uh, I need joy in my life. I can be very serious. I can stress easily. Like I can feel anxiety. I'm always doing heavy lifting with people emotionally. I love a little sitcom at the end of the night when I don't have much on my plate. But the second and the third, that's consuming to procrastinate and disassociate, which happens. On a Sunday when I'm enjoying a scone with my partner Natalie as part of our like Sunday brunch ritual and I'm doing it small pieces and I'm doing and I'm, I'm enjoying it that's consuming to luxuriate within my own body and my senses and to create a meaningful experience because we connect over food with her on a Tuesday when I have phone calls to make but instead I find myself sitting at the coffee shop and eating the scone and having the, the you know the uh, cappuccino uh, maybe I'm consuming to procrastinate maybe I'm consuming to disassociate from the fear that I might feel in making those phone calls. So you, I, I don't get to decide for you, you get to decide for you. This is part of being a creator, just deciding what's the lane that I stay in, where it's healthy versus unhealthy, where am I consuming, when am I creating, what is of value to me, how do I take time off to relax and luxuriate, what level of disassociation actually is kind of healthy for me because there's always value in it. You get to choose, right? You get to choose, and that's what is part of being a creator. But a creator consumes more often consciously than they do unconsciously. And they understand these four modes of consumption. Are we consuming to create, or are we consuming to procrastinate? We're consuming to luxuriate and rejuvenate, if you will, or we're consuming to disassociate. So that's what I got for you today. I hope this is helpful. Expect more from me on this over time. And if you dig it, drop a comment or an emoji below or share us with someone you love. I'll be back tomorrow. Peace.